The world can seem upside down at times, which has set me on a journey in search for love, truth, and ultimately personal freedom. I'm on a mission to help people find peace and healing so that each of us as individuals and ultimately the collective can be free from whatever keeps us stuck and skews our view of just how beautiful this life can be. Welcome to The Lucas Mack Show. Hello, brothers and sisters. Welcome back to another episode of the Lucas Mack Show. I am Lucas Mack. I'm so pumped for this episode to drop. I recorded with Anthony Graffio, who um, is an amazing brother, someone who we talk conspiracy theories, rabbit holes, faith, his redemptive story. And we also talk about his new company, which is a product that I use uh, regularly, almost nightly, um, to cook our food. We love it. It's called the Ungovernable Project, um, which is a beef tallow um, company for cooking and also skincare. This is a really cool story. Um, I know you're going to like this. And brother Anthony, thanks for coming on. I love you and everyone enjoy this episode. So everyone, like I just said, I've been following um, this brother for a few years now, and I've seen him grow into a mighty man, a mighty man of God, a mighty man of truth. And uh, just excited to have you on, brother. So thanks for coming on the show. Thank you for having me on, man. Uh, you have been following for a long time. Um, it's so crazy to see like people that have been following me for so long because it's like almost like a like a metamorphosis, right? Like mm-hmm. I've had so many different stages to yeah. get to this stage, and like even even before people were following me on Instagram and stuff, like just like you said, like where I'm at right now compared to where I was is like only by by the grace of God, you know. Beautiful. It's beautiful, brother. We, we got so much to talk about. We're going to talk about <laughs> the ungovernable project, uh, talk about what's going on in the world and, and you know, how you, how you came to the truth and, and just your journey. But one for people who have never seen your content or, or known your story, you know, give us a little bit of background where you grew up and, and, uh, just tell us about your story, brother. Yeah, for sure. All right. So my name is Anthony Graffio. Um, I'm a black belt in conspiracy theory. Um, <laughs> truther. Uh, my story starts in a small town in New Jersey called um, West Caldwell, New Jersey. Um, I'm from the East Coast. Um, I lived about 20 minutes from New York City. Mm. So um kind of got caught up in the lifestyle of you know going out and clubbing and doing all that stuff staying out real late and just doing all sorts of debauchery um but what really started me on my truth journey uh because i'm sure that's what we want to talk about first um is uh in about um i was in seventh grade when um the twin towers went down Mm. and yeah it was um actually one of my my neighbor's father died in it my father was supposed to work that day and by divine intervention uh the train was late for him to get into that to to the building so uh yeah so yeah so it definitely um it hit home for sure to say the least and um i was already kind of like looking into um different conspiracy theories um I, i started super young i read the book um behold the pale horse by william cooper Awesome. That was like my, That's my an early first. Book. You were young. Yeah. That. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. I was super young. And then like, um, I started looking into like the, uh, the music industry and like, you know, which is prevalent today. Right. Like all yeah. of this stuff, how it all just is, is coming out now is insane because I've literally been watching this happen for like 20 over 20 something years at this point i'm I'm 35 so um it's just crazy to see um how far this journey has truly taken me but um i started looking into like the music industry stuff jay-z p diddy all these people um just like it was very um it wasn't as loud as it is now with their symbolism you know it was there but you kind of had to look for the symbolism right Yep. Um, it was more hidden. They, they weren't as bold as they are now, to say the right. least. It was more the artwork they presented versus them actually doing the symbolism, you know, themselves. 
Exactly. And like the symbolism they did, you had to kind of be in the know of what they were doing to know mm. about it. You know what I mean? Like it wasn't like, oh, they're putting Satan directly in a music video or they're like, you know what I mean? Like it was very subtle. And then like it, it as it grew, it expanded very fast to the point we're at now. But um, I started to look into just just different rabbit holes and the 9-11 one is like really what got me, got me, you know, Um I forget when it came out. I want to say it came out probably like 2000, like 10, maybe. I don't know. Zeitgeist. Oh. I, I watched. Yeah, that was that was a, an early one, too. I watched Zeitgeist. I watched Loose Change, mm. like all these different things. And let me tell you something. Um, from doing these deep digs into uh, these Illuminati's and all this stuff at that time, Alex Jones and all this stuff back then. Um, especially as a young kid, right? Like in middle school to high school, um, it, it, it frankly scares the life out of you, right? And you want to go and tell every single person about it. Like, dude, they're going to come. There's this new world order. There's this plan. They're going to, and yeah. nobody listens to you, man. No, no, no <laughs> nobody listens. Not back then. Not right. back then. Now, right now, it's it's like it's like the end thing to to talk about, right? It's like more a popular thing because it's more in their face at this point. But back then, you're called the crazy guy, the crazy conspiracy nut guy. Right. Oh, like even my own family, you know, they just thought I was absolutely insane, and now they're like, "Whoa, maybe my son was onto something all these years." But um, so yeah, it just I've been doing this a very very long time, um, and I've been talking about it on the internet for a long time i mean i've been making crazy uh, you've seen I, I have like almost prophetic facebook posts from like right. the early 2000s right. of things that happen in on, on this timeline because i didn't know when it was going to happen it's kind of like when like jesus is going to come nobody knows right. nobody really knows when it's going to come right. but there'll be signs right and you know we, we got to the point where it's like the signs are showing you know what i mean like all, all the dots are lined up. Everything is shown now. And it's like, it, it's is that for a purpose? Like, are we in like a, a devolution kind of thing? That's like, we're unsyoping the psyop that it has to happen at such a extreme rate? Or are we like in at the actual, like maybe the birth of the new world order? That's, we don't know. I, in my personal opinion, um, I don't want to talk about, you know, 17 and all that to get you in trouble, but. Yeah, no, we can talk about it all. Okay, I've had okay. state the wrong. You know what's interesting? I've got many episodes getting taken down. I have a couple strikes, but I don't care. Okay. Care. Okay. You know, we'll we say talk. 17. Yeah, we'll yeah, say, say 17. Say, yeah, yeah. Okay. So when 17 came online, um, that kind of was like a confirmation for me. At first, I was like, ah, this is a LARP. This is fake. Because people are showing it to me. They're like, dude, did you see this on 4chan? And da 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 And I'm like, ah, it's BS. Come on, man. That's like this a kid in his basement or whatever. Mm. And then I started to see like that dots started to connect with like donald trump and like like actual events started to happen so i was like eh, let me look into this thing actually you know and then like w like everybody else it kind of just built this like giant community of like people that have felt like me and have been in that dark place and like known about this stuff for so long but didn't have the voice to really talk about it and it was like i finally like had a a community of people that started to understand and then from like 2017 on when like you know 17 came online or whatever um, so many events started to happen right it's like i think epstein was like a true catalyst of like mm -hmm. for, for for the truth to come out to people right because they're like uh, some some people are still in the dark about things and you know like like 17 says four to six four to six percent gone forever so right. um right they, they just might never get it through their head but like people like my mom and stuff that called me a crazy conspiracy theorist for so long she was like whoa like mm. donald trump is saying there's a deep state there's like this island with all these high level people that are going to it and doing sick things like so it started to confirm things for the normal person right mm. and like to kind of like speed up to where we are now is like we're we're literally watching the whole thing being dismantled right. and in my personal opinion a lot of this has already been done Yep. I mean, yep. you know, during I'm COVID. Yeah. 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 Like so many weird things, the Tom Hanks stuff and all right. the weird Who symbolism. Hasn't, hasn't tweeted since yes. Australia, you know, gone. Yeah. Bye. Yeah. 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 And we live in the time of like CGI and AI. So they could literally 
make anybody look like they're alive and and you know prosthetics and whatever yeah, and exactly wearing masks and costumes and all crazy kind of stuff which i, I believe in yep. uh joe biden's ear canals they connected one time now they don't exactly so right exactly yeah, but that's so just a facelift that's just a facelift you know <laughs> yeah, yeah ex exactly a facelift uh changes your earlobes right but but yeah like to, to speed your audience back up to where we are um but yeah, that's what like sent me down my first rabbit holes was like the 9-11 mm. stuff and the, the music industry. And then like, you know, for all the document, every single documentary that had to do with like conspiracy or I was big into aliens, too. I'm not in anymore. Mm. You know, when I read the when I read the book of Enoch, that all started was like, oh, they're fallen yep. angels. Yep. But I was big into all that stuff, like Valiant Thor and like right area 51 like i looked into every every conspiracy theory that you could think about i've looked into it I've, I've read it i've looked into it i've studied it and it's gotten me to this point where the number one thing that people will find at the bottom of the rabbit hole is jesus christ straight mm -hmm. up that's mm -hmm. what's at the bottom of the rabbit hole people are, are searching and digging and looking through all this stuff it's jesus jesus is there because you see that satan is there satan yeah. is real and you right. can't have one without the other, right? right? Right. That's right. That's right. Man, brother. Uh it's amazing. You know, I just want to affirm and in, in parallel. So 9-11 was an interesting experience. I mean, for so many, but my personal story for 9-11, I was working construction. I paid my way through college and it was working uh manual labor at this construction company. So it was really early. I grew up in Seattle. And I'm on my way. And I used to listen to the Christian radio station, the FM station every morning on driving to the work. And it was like the typical morning DJ FM, like, <laughs> you know, like that totally cheese ball. Like, yeah. And it was fascinating. He's like talking like, the, hey, no, all right, coming up next. And he goes, oh, like his voice changed. He's like, oh, oh, something. And he starts talking about a plane hit the tower and his voice mm. changed. And I saw just the veneer get pierced of that fakeness. I have not listened to FM radio since 9 11, 2001. Since wow. that day when I heard like the fake, like, oh, you're all fake and phony. And then, you know, that piercing. It's so fascinating how it pierced so many veils on different layers. Oh, yeah. You know, um, but I went into journalism. So I was a TV reporter for, for many years. So I never looked into the 9 11 conspiracy. Um, I heard about it. I knew about, it. you know, I knew it existed, but I wouldn't touch it, uh, because I was still, I was aware, like I've been aware about, I grew up in a, a deep, almost a deep state, uh, home when it comes to religion. So mm -hmm. I understand the religious side of like the deep state and how, uh, how all of it works. But when I finally dug into nine 11 and when I met 17, uh, and I feel like it's a meeting of 17. It's almost like, yeah, yeah. Dude, my yeah. whole world made sense. Everything. Oh yeah. And, um, you know, it was funny how I found him, found, found it was on TikTok. And you know, um, uh, that guy who we had communicated, the guy who passed away, took his life, um, on that show, cannabis and combat uh, it was like a year ago. Oh yeah. You know, yeah, yeah Justin, like, it's Justin. like, you know, yeah, Justin. So I saw him on TikTok and I started seeing his videos and started watching him. And I'm like, dude, what is all this? And then I started reading for myself. I'm a huge proponent. And this is why I love why you speak with such authority is because you know the posts. It's like people who don't know the scripture, know the Bereans, the Bible says they study the scriptures daily. You know, yeah. the Bible says, study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Yes. And when people read read Q for themselves versus allowing the media narrative of QAnon or all the, you know, it's oh, like yeah. everyone's going to tell you anything about everything, what to believe. But those who go first source, that's where the power is. And there's this quote, I say it often on this podcast, um, A.W. Tozer is this old, old uh, preacher wrote tons of classic books, but he has this quote, he says, a man with an experience is never at the mercy of a man with an argument. Mm, so when you that. read it yourself, when you experience it, who's going to say, no, it's not true. Right. When you read these first four. So anyway, I just want to, I just resonate that, you know, the posts and you, you know, and it helps ground and it's like standing on a firm ground. Um, For sure. Definitely. You know? It's like, 
like you said, like without that structure, without understanding really what it was at first, I was questioning it too, but yeah. having the background that I have in the reality of my life of, of witnessing all of this stuff for so long, when I saw it and I saw the things that connected to it, I was like, yeah, all of this is right. There, you know, like every single thing that they're saying, there's not one thing that's wrong. Now, the problem is what happened when too many people got the information mm -hmm. is a lot of people took advantage of that information. And they, right. a lot of people created their own timelines and their own stories and their own situations and scenarios right. and dates and this and that. And it, it turned a lot of people off from it instead of actually just actually going into the meats and the potatoes of it yeah. and just like witnessing it for yourself and reading it and disseminating it instead of like listening to a, to a talking head, like you would on Fox or CNN, right. right. You know, and right. they, they, they messed it all up, you know, they messed it all up. And it's still, you know, you, you got deltas and things that are still going on to this day. Sadly, we can't even post a drop on Instagram without getting deleted. I've been deleted right. 22 times. I, <laughs> I, I can't lose another page. Honestly, I just, <laughs> That's I, right. I've no, worked I way can. too hard. I right. worked way too hard. You know right. what I mean? So now it's like, for me, like with posting and stuff, it's like, I just could post the news because it's like the news is the drops, right? It's like, Right. Well, it's the reality of the situation. You know, we got um, you want to talk about a situation like P. Diddy. Right. Like, this is this is a, a huge, huge like player in the game. A lot of people are like, oh, it's a distraction. It's this. It's that. No, it's freaking not, dude. I right. mean, this is right. it's it, it's lower on the totem pole of, of what it is at a, at a whole. Right. But it's still a huge piece on the chessboard. Yeah. A huge piece because they all connect. They all connect. They all party. They all blackmail this, that. They all, they're all yeah. together on, yeah. on that kind of forefront. So that situation happening right now is proof to me and to people that have looked into 17 of seeing, oh, okay, well, things are starting to get rolling now. Like the right. ball starting to – it's in motion. I've, I've felt like it's been in motion the whole time, but you have to be really deep on the inside to understand that, you know? Right. Like right. somebody like you that you follow me, you understand. Like yep. you've seen so many like situations that have tied and dates and this and that and numbers and signs. It's like – for people that believe, oh, that's a psyop or your audience that doesn't, you know, whatever. It's truly not like we're, we're, we're at the point that we're at right now because of this, because Donald Trump became the president. Yep. Like in yep. reality, if if the other timeline for maybe people that don't like Trump on your audience, I'm sure they, they all love him. But sure for, <laughs> on the other timeline, if Hillary Clinton won, <laughs> It wouldn't be uh wouldn't right. be what you guys think. It would be very, 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 very catastrophic. Right. It would be way way worse than what Biden is. Biden is like, this is like it's messed up. We're gonna get through it. It's horrible, I know. But what Hillary had planned in 2016, if she won, was a way, way different situation coming yeah. at us. Yeah, that's right. It's fascinating. Even um there's so much numerology you know i grew up in christianity where it was like numerology is evil and satanic and you have to watch out for all these things but really it's not the bible is is a numeric code book it's a coded book and you know so you look at i look at a couple of things trump enters the scene in 2017 and so if you add two plus one plus seven that adds the 10 but you drop the yeah. zero and that's year one and one is the beginning in the beginning God created in the beginning was the word. So year one is 2017. Also Q enters what month? October. You drop the zero. Q enters on one, one, essentially, if you look at that number. Yeah. And yeah. Um, so 2017 is the beginning. 2018 adds the two. Two in the Bible is witness. God sends his, Jesus sent his disciples out by two to give witness. The spirit of God moves mm. on the face of water in Genesis 1, 2. So two is witness or testimony. Mm. Three is the number of God and Genesis one, three, God said, let there be light. God is light. And in him, there is no darkness at all. So three is this number for God. Four is the number of division. So 2020 adds to four. And the first time the word divide is mentioned in the Bible is Genesis one, four. It says, and God saw the light that it was good and God divided the light from the mm. darkness. So you have 40 days of fasting, 40 days of rain, 400 years between Malachi and Matthew, 400 years of captivity. Four is always going to separate pre and post. So 2020 divided everyone. 
sure. intentionally. It was the wheat and the chaff. It was the sheep and the goats. For it was sure. when Jesus says, those will seek to save their life, the same shall lose it. Those who are willing to lose their life for my sake and the gospel, the same shall save it. The dichotomy of, of that. Anyway, so we get all the way to, or I, want, I want to talk about Trump real quick in the two timelines, because I think this is fascinating for the audience to hear. So 1 Corinthians 15, 52 says, in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible. So I had the uh, champ, the, the designer of the Great Awakening map. I had him on a couple of podcasts a couple of years ago, and we were talking about this. And I read that verse to him and he goes, trumpets? He goes, Trump wow. Pence. Yeah. And I was like, oh my gosh. Cause I was saying the yeah. last Trump, like the last president with, you know, yeah. Lockwood, but he's saying trumpets. And then I looked at who did Hillary take as a, a VP candidate? Kane, Timothy Kane. So you had the House of Kane mm-hmm. versus you basically have the Edemic race versus the Blue Bloods playing their timelines out and 100%. thank God for his mercy and grace in this uh timeline we aren't on that other timeline so it's a fat bro it's that's people, powerful and that's the grace of god people have no idea this is where and we're in year eight right now 2024 and eight's the number new beginning god commanded them to circumcise themselves on the eighth day god rests on the seventh on the eighth starts again like eight is always the number of new beginning but if you put it horizontal it is Kennedy. the x yeah. but it's also oh. the x it's the timeline of People are going to go one way or the other. There's a Definitely. there's a split, you know. Um, so we have all this truth coming out. We got guys like Cat Williams, just like in his amazing way, telling everyone, so it, you know, like it was the best. Um, even Rogan is now like I, there. I was listening to an episode of his the other day with all um, Ari Shafir and all these guys on it. And uh, they're like, better. They're like, who's going to vote for Trump? And they've said the better question: Who isn't in this room going to vote for Trump? Yeah, anything. That's where we're at right now. It's fascinating. Yeah. And the the crazy thing about Joe Rogan, I actually just did a podcast with my my friend who were uh, he does uh, security at the Comedy Mothership, and oh, um, cool. yeah, we were talking and we were just saying like Joe is being surrounded right now by Christ. Like he mm. just is, is being bombarded by it almost. Right. Mm. It's like all these guests that he has on from like uh, Oliver Anthony pulling out the Bible in front of right. him. Right. Hit rock telling him I'll, I'll get you at my yeah. preacher. Yeah, that was Hogan. Yeah. Like he's surrounded by it right now. You know what I mean? And it's like, that is like God. I mean, if Joe Rogan turns to Jesus, he is like the Paul of our time straight yeah. up. Yeah. Yeah. Like th- that's how, that's how of a mouthpiece that Joe Rogan would be for Christ. Like, yeah. What a and con- I feel like we might see that dude. I feel like we might see that. Honestly, I feel like that gives he- me chills. That gives me chills. Yeah. Me too. Me too. The Lord is definitely working his hand in Joe Rogan's life. I believe that. And I know a lot of people are like, Oh, he's controlled opposition and da, 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 da. But in my, my personal opinion, if God could take Saul mm. and change him into Paul, I think that, it, and, you know, unless they're a pedo and do some really messed up things, right? Because right. those people, no matter what, th- like you said, they're they're the bloodline of Cain. Yes. I actually had this conversation. It's funny. I had this conversation with my friend the other day who uh, who was lived in a Christian household his whole life and is kind of looking into like Judaism and like w- believing that Judaism is like the true religion. Mm-hmm. and. I was trying to explain to him, you know, Revel- Revelations 3 9 about like, oh, I'm sorry, 2 9 about, you know, fake ones and the synagogue of yeah. Satan and all that stuff. And it really, it, it ties back, in my personal opinion, um, in my personal opinion, it ties back to when Noah cursed Ham, mm. right? Yeah. Yeah. Because that is the bloodline of Cain right there. Right. Right. That- yep. Yep. Well, he actually cursed, he cursed Canaan. Yeah, it's done because Cam was already blessed. So yeah, curse Canaan because he yes. can't take the curse back. It, you know, dude, there's. You're right. I mean, keep going, man. It's so it's interesting, so, right, bro? Interesting. It is, it is so fascinating, and you know, I I grew up. It's just not about me. I just contextually. Yeah, I've been questioning the entire eschatological or the eschat eschatology whatever the timeline that we're yes that we're on like i'm even at the point right now where i think we might be 
at the time where Satan was loose for a time and season in Revelation. I've heard this. I've heard this. I've heard this. You no, know, and I and I'm not saying this is true or not, but it just seems like it is so beyond. Yeah. It's beyond. Yeah, it's rampant it's for sure. Absolutely insane, you know. Um so do you believe uh, with that theory because I've heard that theory before, do you believe that like Tartaria was the millennial reign and like why like, they got rid of all these I buildings? I can One thing I liked about the King James Bible, it says in 1 Corinthians 15 or 13 when it says like love is patient, love is kind, it says charity that uses the word charity. It says charity believeth all things. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm like, I can believe that. And what does it feel like? Like, all right, did Jesus reign and rule? Why did all the Kings and all these countries, even though they had different names, the, the paintings of the Kings all look the same. Was it, mm -hmm. um, did he rule and reign? Anyway, this, I mean, we know like, it's interesting. Very I wake interesting. people up all the time, even going to Austin, like look at that Capitol building. And they tell us that people that lived in the Alamo, built that like the alamo yeah you know like what monkeys and wheels like yeah wagons built Austin? exactly no the answer is no it, they didn't so i actually really like this tartarian narrative which also i think they mocked tartaria by calling it barbarian like what who did they say took rome down the barbarians mm. they really think it's tartarians and then joseph stalin one of his first edicts as premier was to kill all remaining Tartarian bloodline. Mm. Well, I'm fascinated by the concept. I don't know if it's true you or think not. The Romanovs were, I think the Romanovs were highly blessed, intelligent, and favored. blessed Christian orthodoxy favored, favored people. Yeah. Yes. My, my Russian neighbor, we were in Seattle and then we moved to Dallas a couple years ago, but my Russian neighbor, his, grandfather was killed of her being a pastor in um soviet russia and then his mm. father-in-law was also jailed for being a christian pastor they let him out the day they let him out they executed him and so he wow. lived in, like just they hated christians like soviet yeah. russia hated christians bolsheviks exactly right and he would tell me about um peter uh czar and and he would just talk about what a great mind and what you know, he was well read and he people loved him and he was for the people. And he was talking about the Romanoffs like it was the 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 legacy. I always look at the Bible says, um, a good name is rather to be chosen than great riches. And yes. the Romanoffs have a good name. There's a good name passed down that has been tried to erode. So I'm fascinated. Like I look at all this stuff, like, you know, the Melania story is like, is she why not? Could she be? I mean, at this point, why not? Why would she well, not be? The world's so crazy exactly. on the dark side. Why would it not be just as crazy on the good side? Exactly. And like that, that, um, that whole entire timeline of like Putin and the soccer ball, they yeah. actually met on like the hundredth anniversary of the Romanovs being killed. Wow. Um, the Romanovs, all their jewelry was stolen. Trump actually says we need to return the diamonds, mm. the diamonds, the diamonds of the Romanov family were stolen. Wow. Um, they wow. say that they never found Anastasia's body. They never found her body. She's a hollow grave to this day. Wow. So they never found her body. Um, there's a lot of things that, you know, you look at the actual Disney movie, they make her look like Melania Trump. I've right. put up a picture before, like it, they, you put them side to side. They're wearing like the same black dress and like crown little thing. Like, so is it really so far fetched to believe that? Right. You know, like my my personal opinion is like, I, you know, I I I do believe that there's a bloodline that comes directly from Christ mm -hmm. and that that it's the opposite of the blue blood. Right. Yeah. It's like, yeah, it's the like Adem almost it's the like Adamic line. It's the Adamic. Yes. Line. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And it's like it's almost like there's like um like light like in their DNA, right? Mm -hmm. Like it's, it's like they, they're just a different kind of like person. And the crazy thing is, is that it's not only because they're in a bloodline, like a family because JFK Jr. And JFK, for example, they're from an evil bloodline. Yeah. Their family, the Kennedy family was a, one of the 13 families in the Illuminati. Yep. So 
it's not it's not even like it's a bloodline that is through family but it's a bloodline it's a fingerprint we'll call it how about that mm. it's a fingerprint kind of like how god put his fingerprint on david like you look at the you put you, you look at in the bible right the old testament you look at who he chose right ezekiel right. he chose all these jeremiah all these prophets right so do you like why would have why would that just stop Right? Why would that just stop? Why would right. he just be like Old Testament? Okay, we sent Jesus, but now we're just gonna stop. Right? No, I don't believe that. Like, right. you know, you go back and you look like JFK Jr., Lincoln, uh, yeah. John. Why, why did they want to kill John Jacob Astor, Guggenheim, right. Isidore Strauss, and Sink the Titanic? Patton, right? Or Patton and all? You know exactly. Why do they want to take these people out? I love, I love the blood. You know, the blue tent. You know, they did the. Um, uh, the bloodline story. I, I, I freaking That's deep. It. Dude, yeah, it's deep, deep and it's great. Like why? Not? Yeah. I'm at the point, you know, the Bible says that it says in Hebrews it says we see then that they cannot enter in because of their unbelief. Mm. And so the Israelites cannot enter into the promised land because of their unbelief, They're murmuring, complaining. And then you look at Psalm one, Psalm one says, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. So mm. scorning, disbelief, jaded, saying, nah, being like the three friends of Job that are constantly telling Job, what are you doing? You know, what are you doing? Just curse God. Yeah. Even his own wife's like, curse God and die. Just be done with this. This is, this is hell. And it's, that's why going to the source, reading the posts or reading scripture yourself, not going, you know, not just going to church. Everyone goes to church and abdicates their responsibility. They have some man pontificating their own belief structure to them versus everyone you just named or all these first source champions of yeah. humanity. You yeah. know, they're living it. It's not theory. It's it's in practice. So yeah, exactly. No, I love that. And you know, I have I have a story for your audience because I was <clears throat> Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna come back on your podcast because I got so many bro, stories bro, that we could I hope so that man. we could that we could go through, but yeah. I'm, I'm gonna give this one to them for tonight. So I was very, very much um not a believer in the Bible for a long time. Mm -hmm. Um I I got hurt by the church when I was young. Um that's a story for another day, but uh and I was kind of new agey. Like I, you know, I said, I believed in aliens and the Palladians and da, 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 and all this stuff and whatever. And, um, it wasn't until like 2020 where I started to believe in the Bible. And I, I have a story of how I started to believe in the Bible. Um, so I, like I said, I was very new agey. I was doing new age practices like moon rituals and uh, just like, not like in a satanic type of way, but like, Oh, it's yeah, a new moon. I'm going to no write joke. down, yeah. I'm going to write down my cares and toss them away. And like yeah. all, all that goofy stuff. Right. Um, and I would meditate all the time. I would do like these meditations where it's like, you're going to the higher realm and da da da. you're going to heaven and well, crazy, crazy meditations. But like when I was a kid, I, I always would uh, not like, I don't want to say call it astral traveling because like that's new agey, but like I would leave my body as a child mm -hmm. and I would go to places that were familiar, right? They were like in the same realm that I was in. For example, mm -hmm. when I was a kid for many years, I'd fly to my neighbor's house who was this sweet old lady and her entire house was full of demons and dead bodies. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. This would happen to me for a very long time until wow. until I was about 11 years old. I would have a consecutive dream where I would fly to this kingdom, this golden kingdom, right? And I and I and this all tied together when I like became super Christian and read the Bible and stuff. Because for a while, I, I thought I was flying to Atlantis, right? Mm -hmm. So I'd fly to this kingdom. It was a golden city, beautiful golden city. There was beautiful beaches that had like diamonds in the beach. There was these wow. giant sea turtles. I remember this, the gigantic sea turtles. And um, I was at a wedding, right? And I was a photographer at this wedding. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now that I've read the Bible and all this stuff and it starts to connect, I was like, oh, I was, I was at the, I was at the bridegroom's wedding. Yeah. I was at the feast. I yeah. was, I was at the kingdom. I got shown heaven. I got, you know. Cause there, there, I believe in situations where God takes a child because a child has more innocence yeah. and 
can show him these things and, and can give him visions and show him things. So, but to tie all that in now, okay, I was gifted at meditations. Mm. So um, one of my friends, uh, you actually might know him, you know, Zen, Zen Lounge. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, Zen Lounge, he sent me a meditation because when he was a little new agey too at the time, and he yeah. sent me a meditation and it was um, from this doctor that he actually used to work for, Dr. Tad James. Dr. Tad James is a uh, hypnotist, mm. right? So I do this uh, meditation, right, where um, you're going to be talking to your higher counsel, okay? That's the name of the meditation. So my eyes are closed. I'm getting into the meditative state, and I get into the meditative state. I, I like I'm out of body, basically, because I'm able to do this. Um, I'm out of body, and I get approached by a being, right? And now, this is before I read the Bible. This is me still questioning all oh, the council of nicaea yep. king james he was a freemason this and that like just yep. just having a conspiratorial mind yep. it will take it will take you far away so just understand so i don't know the bible like that okay mm -hmm. so i get approached by this being and this being has the head of a human the head of a lion the head of an eagle and the head of an ox wow. and it has these gigantic wings right? Wow. Like these gigantic wings. And it tells me, uh, brother, we are the ones that watch over you. You need to know who you are. Mm -hmm. And um, then this other like light, light being with like rainbow, like wings lands in front of me and it looks at me and I know it goes, it says, you need to know who you are. Right. Mm -hmm. So I turn around, I wake up out of my meditation months go by months go by. Um, I became friends with a Christian, um, on Instagram. And he's like, I've always, you know, believed in God. I, I believed in Jesus. Like, don't, don't ever think I never, I've always believed in Jesus Christ since I was a child to now, yeah. but I didn't believe in the Bible. I did. I, I thought the Bible was manipulated by man. Yeah. So I finally gave in. I was like, you know what? I'm going to give this Bible thing a chance. Right. Mm. So I was like, you know, I'm just going to randomly open up to a book and I'm just going to start reading right there. Tell me how, bro, I open up to Ezekiel. Ezekiel yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it literally explains what a cherubim is. Amazing. And I was like, all right, the Bible's real. Wow. Wow. Bro, that gives me and chills. It, that gives me chills. It, yes. It was, I have chills to this day, man. And it made me, from that point on, uh, read the Bible. I got baptized. Um, mm. I go to church all the time. I have all these amazing blessings from god and all the fruit and how you've seen my metamorphosis and all this stuff and it's yeah, yeah. I, I i literally have had a spiritual experience at the point where it's like i've seen that god is very 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 real and yes. Yes. that he uh that he will send something or somebody or a situation to show you that his word is real and his word is alive and uh jordan peterson made a great point where it's like how many cross references is in the bible is like so many so many thousands it's like it's there's no other book in the world that can do that whether people think it's manipulated or whether people think it's the real thing right. there's no other book that does that right mm -hmm. there's no other book that does that and it made me realize that this is like it's quantum it's like a quantum yes, physics a quantum computer. Yes. It yes. really is. And it yes. will it will it will play out in your own life. Yes. Like when you're searching for something, you will find it in the Bible. That That's lesson right. that you're looking for, you'll find it in the Bible. That's it's right. literally in God's word. Okay. And like once you truly start to understand that it's the most it's more quantum than 17. It's like it, it's what is literally the glue of the foundation of everything that is happening right now. Yes. Was pre-written. Yeah. was pre-written thousands of years ago it, and jesus christ is the most quotable person in all of history right. whether people want to believe he's god or not he right. was a real person and it's a very special week because this is the week of the resurrection right mm -hmm. like yeah. like this yeah. like this is a great week to talk you know yeah, this is a great is. week to talk right so it's like i just want to give him all the praise and glory that everything that i have in my life mm -hmm. is because of him and like everything that he's given me and will give me or take away from me, I will still love him no matter what. And I'll, I'll lay my life on the line for him. I'll lose my life for him because that is the only true way into heaven, man. Mm, man. That's beautiful, brother. That's Thank beautiful. you. <laughs> <laughs> big, big shed a tear. <laughs> yeah, that's so good. It's so good, brother. You know, 
There is, there's so much. I talk about the Bible. I read the King James Bible seven times, cover to cover. I've read I've, every Bible version. I actually, I'm in branding and I use this example a lot in, in branding. So I, and I did this with my company. There's no other religious book in the world has as many different versions as the Bible does. Yes. So that premise alone tells me that there is truth in it, that they're trying to distill, to manipulate. It's not that the Bible up until this point was manipulated. It's that they're manipulating it right now to, to this world. More than 500 different Bible versions in the English language. And they do, and this is a fascinating history where words matter, right? It's like uh, the, the Jehovah Witness Bible says in John 1.1, 1, 1, so our, the 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 accepted normal New Testament version in, Gen, in John 1, 1 says, in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, the word was God. Mm. But the Jehovah Witness Bible, the New World Translation, it says, in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, the word was a God. Mm. So one letter, one word changes the entire deity of what the mm. word is, a God. So words matter, letters matter, oh, yeah. which is why 17 is so profound in the way it Socratically asked questions and, and was, you know, and even apologized that one, like for the typo moving fast on the go, like, because yeah. I, I appreciate the, the intention of every bracket, every word, every string of code, whatever was put in there, oh, it's yeah. very intentional. Right. So in branding, I gave, uh, and I tell people, this is not a religious exercise, but this is an exercise in language and why words matter. So I gave everyone um, a King James Bible and there's eight people in this group. And so we all read Psalm 23 together. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He restoreth my soul. So everyone's reading and it sounds, it sounds good. It sounds normal. But then I give a different Bible version to each person. Hmm. The um, new, uh, let's see, NASB, NIV. Um, what did I give it? I have ESV. I mean, ESV. Um, oh man, the, there's one. I, I don't know why it's skipping my mind. NHIM. NHIM. I didn't give them that one. Uh, there's this other one that they add tons of words to it. So it's kind of funny. This is a funny story that I, I'll think about it in a sec, what it's called. But anyway, there's this Bible that adds like tons of extra words to the verse. Um, amplified the amplified Bible. So I have them. So we all read in, in, uh, Psalm 23 together. It sounds crisp, but clear, clean. Then I hand them eight different versions. One person still has the King James or seven other versions. And I'm not kidding. It sounds like demons reading Psalm 23. It's like, blah, 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 blah. Oh, wow. and then they, what's funny about the amplify is the person kept reading like seconds after everyone else was done. Everyone kind of laughed. And I said, this is the Babel. But this also applies to brands and companies when when words matter. Like I just did an exercise today with a group. When I say the word story, I mean truth. I'm a journalist by trade. So story to me is a synonym for truth. But someone else might hear the word story and think lie or fable. So it's like, oh, they've been telling mm. stories again. So we mm. think we're saying the same word, but we have totally different definitions of these words that we don't know. We hold on to these and why there's always a miss. So what is the first thing that the serpent asks Eve? He says, yea, as God said, are you sure God said that? The first question the serpent asks Look Eve is, are you sure that God said what he said? And here's the trip about what she said, because she rebuts right away. And this is a, this is a lesson for everyone. God just said in, in Genesis chapter two, don't eat of the tree lest you die. That was it. Just don't eat of the tree. But when the serpent says, are you sure God says, Eve says, God said, we shall not eat it, neither shall we touch it, lest we die. That's where he had her because she added into the word of God. You read Revelation, add, not, add thou not unto these words. Oh, so all this extra narrative gets put in. So that, I'm only bringing this up as the Bible is quantum and it is amazing. And it's also under attack. Oh, and it was never called the King James Bible when King James came out. That man was more bold 
and brave. When we hear, you know, it's funny that the election's coming up on November 5th, because remember, remember the 5th of November, the gunpowder yeah. plot of 1607 was a Jesuit plot to kill King James. Because oh, yes, was, it was. He was trying to bring the Bible to the common man to free yes, them from the popery that was controlling the world. And yes, interestingly enough, the King James Bible, it was called the authorized version, but after he died, they started mocking it. The, the Jesuits created a PR came, campaign to mock it. Uh, it was the seventh Bible in the English language. Super interesting. And there was no Bible in the English language from 1611, not until 17, not until, not until 1881. Wow, that's a long time. Bro, almost 350 years. Yeah, that's a long time. One verse, when they read in church, when they say, a crack Bible, everyone's reading. And look what happened. The revivals, the the, the church, the church, I believe, the Church of Philadelphia, which is also interesting that the, Amer the United States has Philadelphia. Out of the seven churches in Revelation, it's the only church that Jesus doesn't have something against. He has something against every church except the church of philadelphia and here that is the founding of this country and this beacon of light and a shining hill for the world you know um anyway in 1881 the revised version comes out and from 1881 to today we have 500 versions in the english language and i ask people all the time are we more holy are we more enlightened are we more sanctified <laughs> pure no no, not close. we're not, we're less. Right. So yeah, the Bible, sure. I just love what you're saying. Cause I want everyone to hear this because the Bible does matter. Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And I love that because it means that we study, someone can't tell us we have to know it. You know, you had to know it for yourself. That experience, like, can anyone tell you, Oh, that, that vision you had with the, the cherubim, that wasn't real. You say, Get the, yeah. get the F out of here. Yeah. It was yeah. real. You know, what are you going to say? Of course. Right? Yeah. So anyway, bro, I don't even go on a tangent on that. Just to affirm what you're no, saying. No, that's beautiful. Everyone listening, it's like, dude, the Bible is, it is the only offensive weapon in the armor of God. Everything Amen. else is defensive. Everything wow. else is defensive. It's the only that's, offensive weapon, which right is there. why it's been taken from us or confused. And interesting, the King James Bible he was the first Protestant king. He was the first king of the United Kingdom. He actually brought peace to the land. The Spanish Armada tried to take out his lineage with Queen Elizabeth in the Golden Age. The Catholic Jesuits tried to take out um, England because it was standing for truth and this beacon of light. And the Spanish Armada sunk before it even made the shores of England. The very first mm. colony to survive a winter in the United States or in the colonies, Jamestown. Yeah. yeah. Named after. So look at where God's hand and blessing and that Bible was written in a fifth grade reading level at the time. Wow. Bro, if that, you want people to think we're evolving? We're like, in, I tell people, oh, you, you think we're smarter than they were back then? Like, read the Fs, these, thous, and yees. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, it's hard. It's, it's hard. hard. It's hard. <laughs> yeah. um, anyway, brother, I just, I love it. And so before, you know, I, I want to get into, well, actually, anything else you want to share before we like turn well, the corner? <laughs> Yeah, well, you know, it's it's funny because like with that situation with King James is like we look now at what history is, right? It's his story, right? Yeah. And yeah. it's it's completely made the people that were actually the good guys look like the bad guys. And yeah. I have a theory too, even with like uh the Knights Templar, like how they say like the Illuminati was created because of the Knights Templar and all that. I think the Knights Templar was the one trying to stop the Jesuits. Yep. I think that's why they got killed. Oh, I think that's right. why uh, Friday the 13th, uh, the 13th, yep. 13 is such a prevalent number in the Illuminati's. Yep. So I think King James is another one of those people that had that fingerprint of God on him. Right. That's right. And right. they tried, they tried to take him out. And yep. like I said, like when I was first, you know, conspiratorial mind, oh, he's a Freemason, he's this, he's that. But then you look deeper into it and you realize, you know, that, that Guy Foxing was a great, 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 great point because Guy Fox was basically the first CIA. Yes. He was the first intelligence agency. That's, That's right. where it all started. That's and where all of this the, has started. They've made him the protagonist, like V for Vendetta flips flips it. Yes. It makes yeah, guys he's the bad guy. Protagonist. Yeah, but dude, it's so everything's inverted truth. I'll tell you about 13. So 
why 13 is their number is because Genesis 3, 1 is the very first time the serpent's mentioned in the Bible. Mm, so they so. invert it. So they celebrate the serpent. Also, what's mm. cool is Genesis chapter 3, 1 is the 57th verse in the Bible. 5G. G is the seventh letter in the alphabet. Mm. So 5G is their frequency. It's the serpent frequency of 13. Wow. Three, one. And that's what the Mason symbol is. It's G in the middle and seven. Like, yes. Bro, everything's fascinating. <laughs> I look at this world wow. like, that's why I love your stuff, bro. I'm like, sometimes I sit back. I'm like, man, this is just, I guess, you know, to trust in the Lord with all your heart, lean not into your own understanding and all your ways acknowledge him. He shall direct your path. It is to see this as a movie. You know what I mean? Yeah. You say you're watching the movie. For it's like, sure. hey, why not? This is yeah. fascinating, you know? We're not making it out alive no matter what. You know what yeah. I mean? I always tell people, that's like one of the most important things that Christians need to realize is like, mm. there's a lot of, um, especially on Twitter. Oh man, they're the worst. There's a lot of like just book of revelation uh, readers, right? That yeah. they just want to predict the end. They just want to predict the end of the world. They're just, they're like, it, like, it literally says, I think it's in, in, the, in the book of James. It says like, we should not like, be predicting when when god is going to come like right. we shouldn't be we right. shouldn't be I, I forget the word but like basically crying over it like right. bellying over it like and these people are like the definition of that like they're trying to predict when jesus is going to come trumps the antichrist this oh, they're, they're, yeah. i they're, saw they're your just, live i saw your spaces with that dude <laughs> oh yeah that guy dude he's uh he's a little far off in yeah. in between but um yeah. it's it's just like they're they're trying to predict the end when it's like life's not promised to you no matter what homeboy like right. the end could happen today right. or in 20 years so it doesn't matter it's like just be like the 16 virgins that were ready right always be ready for the lord don't right. be like trying to guess when he's gonna come and trying to clean up your act because you think he's gonna come it's like always be ready be in obedience and even if you slip and fall repent just yeah. get right back to it dust it off and get right back to it but right. to always sit there and be like Oh, this is the end times. This is the end times. Uh, this sign, that sign. It's like, yes, there will be signs. Yeah, and and I agree that we should look for the signs. Right. But to always be in, it's like it's fear, right? You're yes. in fear yes. because if you weren't in fear, you'd be like us. We're watching a movie. We're cozy. Yep. We're hanging out. We're laughing. Yep. We're we're looking at this and being like, what a ridiculous thing! Like yes. every time some crazy thing happens, like even if it affects me, I'm like, this is absolutely ridiculous. It's, it's right. funny. It's right. funny. Like watching this administration and the things that they're doing and the crazy things that Larry Fink and BlackRock are doing and right. WEF are doing and telling us to eat bugs and all it's hysterical to me. I think it's literally a hilarious situation. Right. And it's like, it's because I know and, and lean on my understanding of God yes. that I have Jesus Christ in my life. And that if I were to die right here, right now, my salvation is already in check. Mm. Dude, I love it. I, love you it know? I feel like giving you a headbutt just like <laughs> 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 sort of the spirit. <laughs> you know, that's right. Um man, and that's that's it. I was telling some buddies, I got um some buddies that are, you know, they go to Mar Lago, they get invited over there, and they're they're super intense cats, and you know, they're interesting dudes, and they're they're talking all sorts of stuff and this and that. I said, man, to live is Christ and to die is gain. I said, I'm so thankful to be alive right now because at least I know who I am. Meaning, mm. what a gift. Like, uh, you know, we were questioning who we were. I don't know. If, I presume a lot of people at some point wonder like, what am I made of? You know, 2020 yeah. showed us who we were made of. And now even more so, it's like, man, this is exciting. If it goes down, and it goes down and at least we know who we are that we can take that step right across the the veil into god I'm like wow like that was exactly. amazing what a <laughs> exactly so, so it's the exactly. best ending yet right exactly it's the best right. ending yet exactly right. so just enjoy it right. um bro i would love to i want to have and i'm not ending this i just want to talk about the ungovernable project oh yeah let's do so it I let's do it because you know i gave you a shout out on on social and and uh i love it i cook with it nightly if not if not nightly all the time and uh the best i i love your branding everyone go pick Thank this you. up the ungovernable project beef tallow um tell me about your journey <laughs> bro. and even because i saw it 
you know, the the soda can like when you were like stuff like that makes me laugh, dude. It's just funny. It's all funny, you know. It's like yeah, we can't. Everyone takes things so serious, and it's like dude, it's all good. <laughs> My mom, <laughs> uh, you know, but tell yeah. me about uh, of course. Tell me about your journey in this, man. Yeah, so. Honestly, it all has to do with my girlfriend, man. Um, mm. I met I met my girlfriend. Um, we live. It's so crazy. It's like how our 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 story is truly divine because mm. um, the way we met is just like like dude. I you know I was a very lustful person. I'll be one hundred percent honest. Like yeah. I was chasing tail all the time. That was just like my crutch. Like I was completely broken by lust, and that was like what I really had to give up the most. Mm. And um, literally like i moved into uh, i moved to austin in uh 2020 me and my whole family we leave jersey we moved to austin um well outside of austin georgetown mm -hmm. um and um i moved out of my mom's house um i was like uh, you know i'll get into it on another podcast but i was really bad with drugs and messed up my life and whatever but um moved out of my mom's house i moved to an apartment and um she was my neighbor um mm -hmm. she was my neighbor she's from ohio she moved so she worked she worked literally for the enemy she worked for uh hollywood wow. she, like she did yeah she did like um accounting not not like a actress yeah, yeah. or anything like yeah. that she would, but she did accounting for like movies and tv shows and stuff so mm -hmm. she was living in new york during COVID, and she wanted to get out so she moved to austin we both end up like one day um i left my trunk open of my car mm -hmm. and um she knocks on my door. She's like, you left your trunk open, right? And I was like, oh, thank you, whatever. That's the first time I see her. Then I see her again because I randomly saved a turtle. Um, there's a turtle like trying to cross the road and I saved a turtle. That's and cool. then like she was walking her dog as I was walking upstairs. She's like, hey, I saw you save that turtle. I was like, oh, thanks. Like She's like, no, that's awesome. Like That's so cool of you. Mm -hmm. And then I'm at church. And as I'm walking out of church, she's like, hey, neighbor, I didn't know you go to this church. And like, I was like, wait, what? Like you go to this church? And then like, we just like started talking and like, That's she cool. was just like, she was into everything I was into. Like mm -hmm. from like, like every single thing. And yeah. um, she was already on this, like, um, cause I, my whole life, dude, I'll be straight up honest. I ate garbage. I was like the worst eater. I just ate like dinosaur chicken nuggets and right. friggin' every seed oil you could think about and candy and drank so many sodas and energy mm. drinks. I was just like a walking cesspool, but, um, she was into this carnivore lifestyle mm. and, um, she, she was the one that put me onto it. And she's like, have you ever cooked with tallow? And I was like, what the heck is tallow? I've never heard this before. I'm Italian. I use olive oil. <laughs> like, what do you mean? Tallow. Right. right? right. So she introduced me to tallow and I was like, my entire life changed. I was like, Oh my God, this stuff's this stuff's amazing. Like, yeah. And, you know, tallow was already getting like big because like Van Man and like all this stuff. So mm -hmm. like when like we, we wanted to start a company, but like we wanted to corner a different market because so many companies were coming out because tallow is also amazing for your skin and uh -huh. we do sell it for your skin. Right? right. So we wanted to corner a market where people weren't going to corner, which mm -hmm. was food. Mm -hmm. We're like, nobody else is selling tallow that is you know, cooking grade, everybody's selling it for their skin. They're trying to it. produce it at, at a small level and they want to sell it for skin. So we're like, let's get into skin later, but let's do it for food first because Great. by fixing people's guts, you're going to fix their skin anyway. Right. So, so, you know, we, we prayed on it. We figured out the name. Um, when you receive one of our packages, it always comes with a Bible verse. We put like, this is, uh, this is our way of spreading the gospel. You know, mm. it, to unbelievers, to believers, like we are a hardcore Christian company and we won't bend the knee to any of that stuff. So that's why we we, we named it the Ungovernable Project is because it's like, we're not going to be governed by big food. We're not going to be governed by big pharma. We're not going to be governed by big government. Like we're going to take control, which is something that we can do first is with our food because mm. they're poisoning us. They're putting these toxic chemicals in our foods right. from seed oils to enriched flour to folic yep. acid like there's so many if the, the rule of thumb should be if you go to the grocery store always read your ingredients that's what i tell people always read your ingredients because if you don't read your ingredients you're not going to know what's actually in there and there's about a hundred different things i posted today on our on our instagram for ungovernable um i saw it from food oh, babe yeah, that's right Chick-fil-A sandwich. Yeah. There's 50 freaking ingredients in a Chick-fil-A sandwich. 
right. it should just be chicken. Right. right. <laughs> like why, why is there 50 right. ingredients in a Chick-fil-A sandwich? So at, we, I just became so, cause I already was like conspiracy theory guy. Like yeah. they're trying to get us and da da da. Like, and I was just so blind to like food mm-hmm. because I loved food. And I wanted to keep eating the I come I want to keep eating the poison. I want to keep poisoning myself, right? I'm like, mm-hmm. oh, I love this stuff. Like, I don't, I don't I remember like even like when I was posting like early on, like people would always be like, You eat like horribly. Like, what are you doing? Like <laughs> they would tell me all the time. And I'd be like, Oh no, we God gave us control over all the food. It's fine, we're fine. Right. And right. Like, right. So we started to like create this product, and it's man, uh I have no words for what it's done. I mean, mm-hmm. we started we started with 30 pounds, just like off a whim. Like we bought like a box. We use 100% grass-fed suet. So no mRNAs, no glyphosate, no soy, no corn. The the ranch that we're partnered with, they have won awards for how good they treat their cows. Okay. Wow. wow. We, we use 100% regenerative farming. So we don't use any factory farming. These cows graze all day from the day that they're born to the day that they get, you know. So, yeah. so they've- they're treated amazingly, right? So we we literally checked every box off on, on getting this stuff done. We mm-hmm. started with 30 pounds. We now cook a thousand pounds a week. Wow. Um wow. we've Congrats, we thank you, man. We've probably had like, I don't know, thirty thousand sales or something, like some crazy, crazy number awesome. since July when we started. And it's and what I truly believe is because yes, we're putting out an amazing product. Yes, we're helping people with their health, with their skin. Like I said, it's also great for skin. Our our one product is called the Wiseman's Gift. So mm-hmm. it's directly to Jesus. It's yeah. um, it's it's tallow with frankincense, myrrh, and gold and castor oil. Mm-hmm. So I had a revelation, and me and my, my girl, we had a revelation. We we're like, like Jesus was given these three things in the manger. Why? like this is this is the baby that can heal all right this is the baby that is the greatest gift of all time and gives you salvation why was he given those three things Mm -hmm. then you look into it frankincense myrrh and gold uh, at a at a high level are antibacterial anti-parasite anti-viral uh anti-aging like so many amazing properties right For, for your skin and your vitality and with the ingredients that we use they're all raw so tallow it's not like any of these other skin creams where it sits on top of your your pores it actually absorbs through it because it's a fatty acid like our skin Mm, so it's it's bio yes it's biocompatible with our skin so it goes through it so all these ingredients that we put in it all go through your skin and heal you and and you know we have thousands of testimonies of people eczema chemical burns dry skin psoriasis uh babies with diaper rash like we're healing people with this product and it's because we put the holy spirit in it right mm-hmm. and it's it's become at such a high level and and it's fruited so much because we're spreading the gospel with it amazing god is the one that is controlling that ship amazing and i give him the glory i he is the one that has made the chachings and has mm-hmm. made all this happen and gave us all the ideas and the things that we do and our relationship is is we go to church it's everything is centered around god and that's what we want to do with our business like you said the bible is under attack right now jesus uh, is under attack right now yeah, the yeah. the nuclear family is under attack right now yes. everything that god wants for our world is under attack right now yes. so what do we have to do we have to be the soldiers of christ and the opposition to the enemy mm. and that's what the ungovernable project is we are not governed by the devil but we are led by christ i love it brother i Thank love you. it i love it Man, I, I hope everyone just, I will put the links in. Got to buy this product. You've got to support my brother here. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. You know, I want to affirm you in this because I, I started, um, I quoted Psalm 1 1. Blessed is man that walketh not in the counsel of the godly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But, and this is for you, brother, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And what is the law? It's to love God. It's not the 613 mitzvot. It's not, it's not mm-hmm. the 10 commands. It's to love God with all, every freaking fiber of our being and to love our neighbor as ourselves. to meditate on the law of the Lord. And in his law does he meditate day and night. And this is you, brother. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in a season. Mm-hmm. That whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Amen.
That's you, bro. That's you. I received that. I received yeah. that. Thank you, That's brother. You, brother. I received that. I've been, um, so I rebranded this podcast. Um, it used to be called the golden rule revolution because I believed it was revolutionary to treat people like people. And, uh, but I just rebranded it to the Lucas Mack show. And one of the things I was like, all right, God, what do you want me to do? What's different? You know, is it just a new name? And, and, uh, felt like God said, I want you to pray for, for every guest at the end of the show, brother. So if you don't oh, mind, man, that. I'm going to pray for you Let's right now. It. Let's do it. Father God, I thank you so much for my brother, Anthony. I love this man. I'm thankful for him. This is actually one of the most fun episodes I think I've I've done. And I'm just thankful for the opportunity to, to sit heart to heart with this beautiful soul. Father, thank you for his girlfriend, that how you have brought her alongside him. Thank you for thank you for the pain as a child opened him up to see things differently. And thank you for showing him, Lord, and giving him the eyes to see and the ears to hear. Father, I just pray that you continually lead him, me, and everyone listening, our families, our children, our lives. Lead us, Lord, into light. Lead us into your presence. Lead us into truth. Baptize us in your love. Baptize us in, in your, your grace. Baptize us in your presence for your glory and for your honor. And I just pray a blessing over every person listening around the world for their households right now, for the sicknesses that people are struggling with, neurological disorders and parasites and heavy metals and, and all the sicknesses that they're putting out to the world, we break and shatter it all in Jesus' name. All of it. All of it returns upon the sender with conviction of sin. Deliver, Lord, your people. Set us free and bring us closer to you and closer to one another. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Amen, man. That was powerful, brother. I, brother. I really want to say I appreciate you for having me on, man. Mm. Um, this is I've done a lot of podcasts with a lot of people. This is a very, very special, powerful podcast. I Thanks, really bro. do appreciate your time. Thank I appreciate you. the energy that you put out, all the scripture. You are like a, a wealth of knowledge with that, man. God has truly given you wisdom to be able to to do that. That's very impressive. Um, Thanks, and bro. I will come back anytime you want to have me on. Thanks, so. bro. <laughs> Thank you. Sure. One of these days, I'll have to drive down to Georgetown. We'll have to chop it oh, up. Of course, dude. Be fun, man. Yeah, I'm yeah. Ready. Come down anytime, man. Awesome. Of course. Awesome. Thank you, brother. Thank you, bro. Thank you. Well, brother, thank you so much for coming on again. Um, everyone, I'm going to put the Ungovernable Project URL in the show notes. I'll put Anthony's info in the show notes. Go check them out and just keep going, brothers and sisters. Keep seeking. God, keep seeking love, keep seeking truth. All things will be revealed in their perfect time. And our job is just to stay in the presence of love, to love one another, to love God, to love love. God is love. And so when we love God and the love of God, all things work out for our good. I love you all. I am Lucas Mack. This is the Lucas Mack Show. Thank you for joining me. And I will talk to you on the next episode. Thank you for listening. If you're struggling to break free and need support, go to my website at lucasmack.com. There you'll find resources like videos and eBooks and also information on how to work with me for coaching. Thank you again. And I'll talk to you soon.